there's just nothing like the opening of the Fifth Symphony for demonic power. When you think that it's just eight years ago since he started out as a composer of symphonies, and then you hear the opening of the most famous of all his symphonies, the Fifth Symphony in C minor, with its iconic motto at the beginning, you wonder how he managed to traverse such a huge terrain of uh, developing sonata form, developing the symphonic ideas, the fact that, that it's just these four notes, yep, up, 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 and then there's a fermata, there's a pause on it, so that no sooner have you started that you're, you're stopped in your tracks. And then he does the same thing, a second fermata. That's a very odd thing to do, unless it's a quotation of some sort. The most iconic of all the Beethoven symphonies is the fifth, and it's been purloined, it's been used, it's been exploited by every single political regime that says there's ever been. Often it was regarded as fate knocking on the door. It was V for victory. This all may be true, but I have a feeling, and this comes from a wonderful German musicologist called Arnold Schmitz in the 1920s, that actually what's going on here is a French revolutionary quotation, which he dare not make explicit, because if he'd put words to the symphony as he did in the Ninth Symphony, he'd have ended up in clink. But behind it is this piece by Cherubini, who was a composer that Beethoven revered, and his hymne du Panthéon had these words. We swear, sword in hand, to die for the Republic and for the rights of man. It's terrific, and it makes sense to me that the Fifth Symphony is all about um, a, a, a kind of statement of belief in the values that came out of the French Revolution and which spread around Europe like wildfire. So, Let's hear what he does. Nous jurons tous le faire en main de mourir pour la République et pour les droits du genre humain. Fanny, you get the prize. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. In a way, it doesn't matter at all, the fact that he's quoting another composer, and he does it in, in a way that there's almost um, a, an elaboration of Cherubini's initial idea. What I think does matter much, much more is the fact that he is formulating political incendiary ideas. Another thing that's so remarkable in this symphony is the concision of ideas, the fact that it's really basically only two themes, the ba 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 theme and the dee da dee da da dee dee the lyrical uh, expansion. your breath is because there's no room to, to, to breathe practically until he brings everything to a, 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 another fermata, another pause, and lets the oboe for the first time play a, a tiny cadenza, which is a kind of human whisper against this sort of political drive. It's, it's, it's either whether it's a suffering soul or, or just an, a, a vague human response, a very feeble in a way, and very eloquent human response to this machine that's just thundering through.
then the second movement is marked Andante con moto. It's a, like a prayer. It, this is Beethoven in his religious mode. It's got already associations with what's going to be manifest in the pastoral symphony, the next symphony that comes along. No sooner has that lyricism started to sort of take wing than he brings in the big guns. He brings in the brass, particularly the, the two trumpets, the timpani and, and the horns. And we're back to a type, a type of martial protest. <laughs> There's so much colour that he's using here, subtle colours of different combinations of instruments. And then there's another moment when he uses the basic theme of this second movement as a, a, almost a frivolous scherzando, and he goes yum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, ba bum, and there's a little comment from the oboe, boom, like a drop of black ink on the page. Then, where you might expect a conventional scherzo, but perhaps you wouldn't with Beethoven because pretty well nothing is exactly conventional with him, he starts uh, the movement with what seems to be a solo lyrical effulgent um, uh, melody in the basses, in the cellos and basses. And again, you think, well, we're into a mood of lyricism and of gentility. But what does he do? He brings back that basic motto, but this time in the horns, it's a triumphant march. It's a cri de coeur, at the same time a call to arms. It's, it is, a, 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 again, another political, subversive statement. And then he develops uh, in a, what would be normally a trio situation, a fugue, bing, ba 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 and that is the end of the trio, and it leads back, but this time to a version of the, the scherzo that's quite different. It's it's almost as if it's looking at the same music but through a broken glass, so that the main cello theme becomes a pizzicato theme. This time, doubled by the bassoons, boom 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 boom. And then you hear the yip -ba -ba -bum of the horn martial theme, but this time it's reduced to a clarinet. It's sort of etiolated right down to a, a thin squeak of a sound. Imagine a whole rookery, slightly Hitchcockian birds. And then suddenly when Google starts to play his pedal, there is a sort of upsurge of energy and then it explodes with the D major of the finale. <laughs> Finally, the whole thing settles on an A-flat chord and you hear the timpani playing C natural and that signals danger because for the next 30 bars or so, he's playing on his own just that little kind of horizon. And against that, Beethoven is, is writing these eerie modulations on top 
it's all suppressed, it's kept in the background and it's, it's pianissimo. And then just over six bars, he writes a mammoth crescendo and the windows fly open and you're into the finale. Eclat triomphal, a sort of brilliant, triumphant um, statement. And what is the statement of? We don't know to start with, we can only guess. But later on, when you get to the double bar, we hear bum beam, bum beam, bum bum, bum bum, which sounds very, very portentous. And there again, it turns out to be a direct quote from the guy who wrote the Marseillaise. La liberté. La liberté. It stands out almost like, um, you know, beautiful coloured or gold lettering in a, in a medieval missal compared to all this chaos of ideas that are either rejected or, or being still evolved as he's working on, on the symphony. And it seems to me that that is an indication that these concepts. Uh, that he's, he's bringing in a clandestine um, but very powerful uh, defence of liberty. And I ask the orchestra when we're playing is to sing it as well. And I hope they will. All you need to sing is Liberté with me. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>